This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Sometimes movies just don't work, you know? Sometimes all the elements of a movie are there. Mm. They might get a returning director, you know sure. what I mean? <laughs> Someone who's big and hot and huge and cool. Mm. You know, maybe the, the previous movie had done so well it was the biggest movie of all time. And they bring back elements from some of the older movies, some of the quips, some of the gadgets, some of the villains even perhaps. Mm. And then all in all, it's just like, this isn't very good, is it? Now, I mean, in theory, this this idea checks out, but can you give me like an example, like a solid, rock solid example of this happening? Sure. Okay, let me do my intro mm -hmm. because as always, Mason, every yes. Tuesday, we do these caravan of garbage videos here where we look mm. at movies or whatever from the past and we go, is this good? And often they're good. Often we'll go through a series and then you get to the last one and you're like, I think this is the worst one by quite a long way. I'm talking about Spectre, Mason, the Whoa. movie Spectre. Please leave a like if you could. Uh, we're wrapping up this particular series at the moment, aren't we? Are you involved in the production of Spectre or, or, or were, you, were, you, uh, were you part of it? Chuck us a like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it now before you hear anything we have to say about the movie Spectre. How do you feel about this? Yeah, you're absolutely right in the sense that again they they're like okay, we want we want to we want to funnel this in the direction of like James Bond antics. We want to bring yeah. back some classic elements. Why they left it till the last one? Damage control? Mm. Was it was it course correction? They're like people are going to want they're going to want the classic they want they want the the Bond cars, they want the henchmen, you know, the Ooh, memorable yeah. henchmen. They want the gadgets, they want the girls, they want all this stuff. Yeah. Too little too late, I think. Yeah. I honestly think that Sam Mendes struck a really good balance with Skyfall. Mm -hmm. I know it's not your favourite, but I think it's a very fun kind of throwback Bond adventure. And it's sure. silly and it's big and it's, you know, it's got a bit of the quips and this and that or whatever. And there's a Komodo dragon. Sure. Everybody saw that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what they did here, they waited a year for Sam Mendes to return because uh -huh. he was doing other things. And in the meantime, they they went to Christopher Nolan. Went, Christopher Nolan, you made The Dark Knight, and we made The Dark Knight also. <laughs> That's right. Uh, would you like to come on board? And he was, you know, apparently, you know, there was some talks there, uh, but it ended up being Sam Mendes. And also, Nolan's also mentioned that maybe he'd do it in like the reboot. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah. But Just, in a way, mm -hmm. he's also made it with Tenet. Yes, that's his Bond exactly. movie, you know, and 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 I guess to some degree he went, well, you know, I could do a Bond movie, but that's not enough for me. I need an additional. I need a couple of backwards boys running amok. Exactly, espionage. This dialogue will be, is too audible. I don't want it to be audible. <laughs> the James Bond movies, the the one downfall is the the dialogue is too audible. You can hear everything mm. all the time. But, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff that's technically excellent. Like, the intro is made to look like a one -er. It's like a handful of, like, interconnected oh, shots, I see, yep. mm -hmm. you know, which is yeah, quite yeah. good. Even s shot on, like, different locations, you know, obviously different times of the year and all that. And it, and it all works as one Different thing. times of the day. Probably. He goes out and <laughs> goes from one room to the other and it's day and night. Yeah. Uh, you know, on first note, he's gone rogue right away. Straight up. In a way, he's actually gone rogue before the start of the movie, which I think is his record. Yeah, but then he goes rogue again. We'll talk about it towards the end. Okay. But things like the building collapse and he lands on the little couch and that's a... S some real Mr. Bean shenanigans as far as I'm concerned. He keeps coming back. The idea of this James Bond being Mr. Bean mm. comes around yet again. And that helicopter corkscrew stunt, you know, they, they did it for real. There's a few things in this that are kind of more of a nod to the Roger Moore era, mm -hmm. like the skivvy for one. Remember the <laughs> sure. corkscrew car? Yes. I wish they put in the, <laughs> the slide whistle yeah. like they did in that stunt. He's wearing like a Baron Samedi costume, you know, with the oh, skull yeah, mask yeah, and the top right, hat. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, there's a few things in here that are very Roger Moore-esque. And then, of course, there's like the white tux, with, which is more like classic James Bond, but Roger Moore, I think, also wore that mm -hmm. at some point, didn't he? But here's, here's, here's a question for you. People hate the song. Now, a lot of people, Mason, at the time, they were like, this Sam Smith character, mm. we don't like this new song that they've put together for this movie. Mm. What's wrong with it? I quite like it. It's fine, it's right? It's a bit of a downer, but I think that's... And, and, it, and it sort of points towards a, you know, a, a melancholy finish, right? Even if, he, even if Bond becomes triumphant at the end, you know... Maybe, maybe he's lost it all, etc. Uh, that being said, I know you would agree it is not a patch on uh, Radiohead's Spectre, which is the song they submitted uh, for, for, now, for this movie. And you, I know you're a big fan of Radiohead. Well, famously, I don't have any opinions on Radiohead. Okay, but what do you think about and, this song? And in keeping with that theme, I didn't listen to it oh, intentionally. <laughs> oh, my God, it's good. It's great stuff. It's really good, is it? Yeah, it's good. I'll never know. It's a real downer. I thought this song was a real downer. Uh, a radio head of nail, hit the nail on the head here. Is that a common thing to like throw away a James Bond song? Because that's happened a few times in 
these particular yeah, I, films? I don't know what the... Uh, Maybe we just never heard about it prior to this. Yeah, you know? I don't know what the... the the procedure is, but I guess it's a sort of a offers are sent out, or, or maybe word mm. gets around in the industry that they're looking for a new Bond song, and and you know various bands people send in yeah, yeah. a submission. Uh, but uh, they yeah. send their demo tapes into the record store producers. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. This is also the James Bond movie where he's just not old anymore. Remember in the last one, they're like, "You're so old, Bond." And this one, he's doing. Remember, he does a big jump and a roll. <laughs> It's like a story, and then just just does a clean roll, and yeah. he's on his feet, and he's off. Mm-hmm. It's just like fucking fifty. Remember the last movie? They're like, fucking ice down your knees, Bond, you old piece of shit. But this, it's just I don't know what he's been doing, mm. but he's fine. I also enjoy how he lives like he's in a college dorm. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, he's ne- he just never got beyond that. It just uh, just a, a mattress on the floor <laughs> and a Donnie Darko poster. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I think that also points to the character of James Bond or this one in particular. He doesn't really care about like the finer things or anything. Or really. anything or anyone. Proper lighting in his apartment. What's put in his blood? Do you reckon he'd be anti vax? Let's not get into it. But he's okay <laughs> yeah. with smart blood. How do you feel about smart blood? I'm not a fan of smart blood. <laughs> not for me. But it's interesting because remember they already put a tracking device in his exactly, arm, Casino yeah. Royale? I imagine it's just they, they needed to replace it because maybe he chewed it out. <laughs> like, like a, a wild animal, yeah. <laughs> Chew this out, Bond. Oh, my God, he is. <laughs> here's, a, here's something that I am a fan of. Uh, He's decanting his blood into a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> He's replacing it with the blood from that guy. <laughs> here's something I am a big fan of, though, for this movie and just Bond in general. Mm. I love Bond taking a trip to the snow because he gets all yeah. these snow outfits, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. And that's, of course, where he meets uh, Mr. White's daughter, the returning Mr. White is back to be like, there's a secret. We'll talk about it. But <laughs> Madeline Swan. There's a secret. It's called Lamericane. I mean, you could Google it, mate. Yeah. If you go- White. Is that a man? Look, just look into it. Just, just, just Google it or maybe find an old Lonely Planet guidebook. It'll yeah, be yeah, in there, yeah. I think. You'll figure it out. Yeah. How Madeline you, Swan. Yeah, how do you feel? Uh, I don't see any of that. Oh, you don't see any chemistry, chemistry at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like mean, of the person to give it all up for, for a second time, to pack it all in. Yeah. Nothing, nothing against... Not uh, at all. Nothing against Leah Seydoux. No, she's great. The, uh, the heir to the Seydoux fortune. Wow. Yeah. Why even act? Just wait for that money to roll in. Yeah. Imagine how many euro that would be. So many euro. So many euro. Just yeah. Hanging out to be harmers on your sea do. <laughs> All the sea do's you can muster. <laughs> Imagine. Mm. Uh, but I just, I don't, I don't. You don't feel like feel chemistry? It at all. Yeah. Maybe there'll be more in the new one, which we haven't seen. Yeah, yet. that is true. Um, how do you feel about the return of mm-hmm. cars with a bunch of gadgets? The last car was. It was said that it had a bunch of gadgets, right? Uh-huh, yeah. It didn't, did it have machine guns in it or had something? machine guns yeah. in it, yeah. So this is a modern, modernised version of that. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it's just embossed text tape, just like over what different things do. And it's meant to be I mean, like... This is MI6, Well, man. I was going to say, it's meant to be like, uh, you know, it's meant to be a prototype, but they are going to hand it off to 009. Yeah. So why isn't it finished? Great question. Yeah. yeah. I just think... That kind of like a labeling would have worked better if this was the older vehicle. Yes. You know? I'm mm. just I'm just not here for it. And something <laughs> that I am here for though Go is on. the return of M on a little screen where she's just like um, I need you to kill this man and then go to the funeral and just see what's up. And and if that's you get, so helpful. Thanks. And if you get a minute, bang his wife. <laughs> <laughs> this it's a direct order bond. Was that what she was like go to the funeral and just see what's up? Is that what she meant? Cuz it's so like she could have been like Secret organization, this guy's at this and whatever mm. and whatever. Like, no, just Maybe she was just a bit sus on the whole thing. She might have been. She's like, This is my last my last will and testament to you, Bond, the last thing I say before I die. Mm. I think there was something up with that guy. <laughs> just log into it. If there's nothing, don't worry about it. <laughs> no worries if not. Okay, bye Bond. I'm okay. dead now. <laughs> when did I record this? I don't know. Well, apparently you can light it up with Skyfall, like she's wearing the same clothes and it's in the same location. Okay. So that that don't worry, they figured it out, Mason. Sure. That's one thing you cannot criticize this film for. And no, another- I can. Yeah, yeah, right. I can unjustly <laughs> criticize anything, and I do regularly. Well, I'm looking for you to unjustly criticize this, Mason, because after many illegal wranglings, they finally got back the rights to the organisation of Spectre. Because that, Kevin McClory, the owner of the rights, yes. he died. Yeah. So they of? Bought, um, spite, I think. Yeah, got him in the end. Yeah. Gets us all though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what I think hilarious about this is it's like, you know how there was that 
unbelievable secret organization that nobody knew about. Well, guess what? There's an even more secret organization yeah. on top of that you one. You double won't <laughs> recognize this secret organization. You double don't know it exists. Now, you couldn't believe that an organization like Quantum could exist without somebody just being like, I'm in a secret organization. Can we have handshakes and secret meetings? Mm. And we meet at the opera. We talk on earpieces and nobody even knows. Yeah. Do you think there could be another layer to this? Do you believe that? Well, I, they've proven it, haven't they? <laughs> they certainly have. And with that, we get a few people uh, joining the ranks of Spectre. We get C, uh, the hot priest, mm-hmm. and he's obviously from Sherlock. He's also transparently evil, so much so that it's in the trailer where you see him scuffling with M. <laughs> they, right. they put that in the trailer. Maybe that was just a standard disagreement in, <laughs> in, a, you know, in an office environment. It happens all the time. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and also, but I mean, it, it, that's not Andrew Scott's fault. No, he just, he's great. He just, has, he just has a sinister hairline. Mm. It's not his fault. I You're also right. have a sinister hairline. I also have a sinister hairline. Right? Uh, then we get Mr. Hinks. Mm. Uh, Which I feel is an attempt to give us a kind of Jaws-esque... Yes villain but they were like well, we can't give him you know metallic teeth that would be too silly so yeah. let's make him robo thumbs why would it's but i think it's just metal thumbnails i think it is i think There's they're nothing, supposed to be sharp but like just make him jaws just make him jaws you brought back blofeld mm. you can just be jaws i agree it's, it's weak People and would look, love it if they brought back jaws i think i agree yeah. oh there were rumors that they were going to and the other thing is i think that first of all i don't think dave batista would do this now no. He's like well beyond just being like a very minor player. Yeah, a, a mute killer. Yeah, yeah, in a movie such as this. At the same time, mm. you know, the chance to be in a Bond movie, why wouldn't you? Apparently a big fan, yeah. so maybe he would have done it regardless. But he does like a silent neck snap, which I'm never a fan of. Mm. Weak, poor, and it, lame. And, and when when uh, Bond and and uh, Madeline Swan are on the train, they're having dinner, yeah. his first move upon like approaching them because he wants to kill Bond, is to like kick out the table between them. <laughs> Shoot Bond in the back of the head. Yeah. What are you doing? He wants a scuffle. Right. And more importantly, I want a scuffle. Because mm-hmm. I think that fight, which is also reminiscent of the one that Connery had on a train with in from Russia with love. With Red Grant, yeah. Yeah. I think that fight's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's quite good. And yeah. I'm a fan of that sequence mm. in general. But of course, the big, the big main player, the big bad, he's back. Yeah. Uh, last time we saw him... He was being <laughs> tilted into a smokestack by Roger Moore. That's right. <laughs> in, uh, for you your didn't see his face. Nobody mentions his name because, once again, yeah. legally they weren't allowed to use him. He was just a bald man. That's right. And he did turn up unofficially in Never Say Never Again. That's true. Uh, but it turns out that Blofeld, he's been behind it the whole time. And not only that, he is the half-brother of James Bond. God. And not only that, he was jealous of James Bond because James he taught... His dad taught James Bond how to ski, and he didn't. He didn't like that, so he killed his parents. And then he decided to make a, a secret organization. And then he was like, "Guess what? I'm not really Franz Oberhauser. You fool! Did you not know that I am? I am Obadiah Blofeld. Whatever the fuck his name is. Sure. It's not his name. Yeah. And Bond's like, great. Yeah. Like that's such a. <laughs> it's all it's just. I, I hate it when, like, and I understand, every, you know, everybody wants to tie everything together in, in a neat little package, but I just hate the idea of, like, all these completely disparate enemy forces. I did them all. Yeah. You know? That rope hitting your balls, I was behind that. That was me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That reveal also felt like that, my name is Khan, reveal from oh, Into yeah. Darkness. It's like, you're only talking to the audience. And I guess, in a way, all movies are talking to the audience. You know what I mean? Sure, but it just in a way, felt like... with the visual language <laughs> yeah. of cinema. <laughs> And then he gives him he gives him some torture. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna improve on the torture mm. of my predecessor. Yeah. By it's a it's an electronic drill and it drills into your memories and then you're not gonna have any memories. And you, it's gonna it's gonna ruin your balance and it's gonna do everything. And then immediately afterwards, once they <laughs> escape, it's it's just very handy that immediately after your brains have been drilled, you can still move and fight like a man who hasn't had your brains drilled. Yeah. Well not only that. He planned to wipe out James Bond's facial awareness. His facial recognition software would be oh, no. offline. Yeah. But I remember when we covered this movie for our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows and it comes out every Monday, you had an interesting idea of what they actually could have done with that James Bond facial blindness thing. Well, they you- could have turned him into the weird misogynist that he's always been in all the other movies. Exactly. If he can't recognise any women, <laughs> they're all the same to him. Yep. You know, I, I kind of thought that's where it was going. Like, maybe Madeline Swan would survive at the end and be like, who are you? Yeah. Are you Eva Green? Are you somebody else? 
Are you that that girl who drowned in paint, oil yeah. or whatever? Mm. Are you Dominic Green? Yeah. <laughs> so I just think kind of nothing in the end. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then they run away, and then, and there's and there's the the big explosion or whatever, the biggest ever on screen. Uh, and to its credit, it's very big. It's a very big explosion. Pretty big. And I will not take it away from the explosion. Mm. How big it Has is. Has it been topped since? I wonder. Oh, who cares? Probably an Expendables movie. Wow. Uh, was there, has there been one since? It doesn't matter. No one knows. Also, <laughs> I really wish, and I remember thinking this at the time, you know how he, he gives him a watch and he mm. goes, this watch is just a watch, but be careful. The alarm is, it's very loud bond. Mm. Nudge and a wink because it's really an exploding watch bond. Yeah. I would love it if <laughs> you throw the watch across the floor and then just a loud alarm goes off. Sure, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Blofeld picks it up and he's like, how do I switch this? Is there a, is there a button or do I... <laughs> <laughs> turn, turn something, turn the, turn the crown. How do I? Oh. How, do, how do you feel about Blofeld getting his Blofeld face? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it had to happen, didn't it? Why would he yeah. not get his Blofeld face? But it's good to know we saw the origin of the Blofeld face. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's great, isn't it? He only got his Blofeld face right off, didn't I he? I enjoy the fact that at the end of the movie... Oh, the finale, uh, the big finish! Just, just despite the fact that Bond literally has a license to kill, he's absolutely killed people for less. Yeah. He doesn't kill Blofeld because I guess why he's aware that Blofeld is a main villain in a previous continuity, and he might need to come back for sequels. So yeah, exactly. What, what are they going to do? Invent a new memorable nemesis instead? Very unlikely. Hinks. Oh yeah, Mister Robothumbs. <laughs> Mister Robothumbs. I don't think they're Robo. Uh, I think they're just metal. Mm, I think they control him. I think they're AI, <laughs> and one's real good and one's real bad. Oh, thumb wars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Very good. exactly right. What What I love about that. Finale in the in the MI in the old burnt out MI six building. Mm. It's an overly complicated setup that was clearly done in a rush. I'll buy the producers. <laughs> you think? No, no. I mean the the villains involved because they're like quickly spray paint James Bond on the wall <laughs> of dead agents. Just put an arrow on here. Just xerox some faces of some yeah. people that he knows. Don't worry about Mister Green. Just we don't need him. <laughs> Bond can Bond can you know fight and run and reason even after his brain has been drilled. But but. Blofeld gets a mere whiff of an explosion to the face and the best he can do is just pop down to like staples and get some <laughs> photocopying done. And I also think it's really strange how he's like, James Bond, I've, uh, I've put, I've put your, the love of your life, in second love I guess, uh, in this building somewhere and there's going to be an explosion. I'm going to set it off in three minutes. And James Bond's like, you're bluffing. Why would he? Mm. Why would this be a bluff? Why would he be like, no, nah, you're right, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> arrest me. Mm. Like, come on. And also, if I may... Uh, Is this about I, the big net? I mean, we'll get to the big <laughs> net. But if I may, uh, were I the antagonist of this sort of movie, yeah. giving someone three minutes to escape your deadly trap is two minutes too long. I agree. I could have done that in three <laughs> minutes. I mean, you, 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 yeah. you, know, you, know, you know your way around a building. Just gone. run around until Just run around. you hear someone yelling. Mm, and then you're like, cool. And then you go. jump into that big net. The big net at the bottom. Maybe I missed it. Was there set up for the big net? Yeah, all the construction workers, they jump into the big net at the end of their shift. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when they like were building that building. Yeah, like their Fred Flintstone yeah, slides, yeah, 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 sliding yeah, down yeah, a yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm serious. And the net's like, it's a living. <laughs> no, I'm serious though. Is the net mentioned or seen? It must be. Because I kind of watch this know. with one eye because it's You're very right. dull and long. Oh, yes. If, if you know what's up with the net, please let me. Maybe it's for like they're throwing stuff out of the building. It's like the easiest way to like <laughs> collect stuff and you throw it into a big net at the bottom. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. No, I don't know. I just don't know what's up with the big net. Mm. Um, and, and anyway, and then and Blofeld's off down the Thames. Yeah. Uh, which is very reminiscent of the Pierce Brosnan one on the Thames. That's right. A thrilling boat chase up the Thames. Mm. Maybe don't go just straight up the Thames. Maybe you fly. Maybe go away. So Bond, who's... who's <laughs> Restricted himself at to a boat, <laughs> uh, can't shoot, shoot it at you. But I mean, good on him. It's lucky that he can hit a moving helicopter from a moving speedboat with like one of the tiniest guns in the world. That is lucky. Mm. Do you also believe that this guy would retire under these circumstances for this woman that he doesn't really know or seem to like or remember? Maybe I still think he might be scrambled. He did get drilled in the brain, yeah. so maybe, yeah. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I just don't. I don't believe that he would walk away at this point in time. Yeah. Maybe he got enough kills under his belt. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason he didn't kill Blofeld is he's like, he's doing his monologue about how I'll, you'll get justice another way, Blofeld or whatever. But in his head, he's like, oh, I killed a hundred dudes. All right. I don't need to do any more. That's, it's off, check it off the bucket list. Also, I'm curious. Do you think he can even kill anybody in, in England? Because he's MI6. He's not MI5. Oh. Maybe he's not even allowed to hold a gun. What does license to kill mean though? Good question. Well, isn't M like at one point? License to kill doesn't mean that you can mm. kill whoever you want. It's also about who you don't kill. 
For example, don't kill me. Please don't. I know you're thinking. I can see it in your shark eyes. Don't kill me, please. Oh, God. I feel like I don't think License to Kill is about who you don't kill. I think it's more about... about who you do kill, yeah. I don't know. If I had to put my finger on it. Otherwise, it's more of a license to sit about. <laughs> That's right. A license to laser bounce. Mm. Anyway, do you know what it's time for? Oh, can I can I give you some miscellaneous notes before we? If you could. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's rude that uh, James Bond made Money Penny uh, go to his flat after hours. Yeah, that's true. She's not rude. getting paid for that. No. Just take the just take the whatever the effects. Just take them. Just yeah. l- Leave it. God. Yeah. Um, she doesn't work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not your um, secretary. I like there was a classic in, during the car chase. I think there's a classic bit of bystander comedy. There's a little man in his little Fiat. And he's and he's, oh, and he's, yeah. he's listening to the opera, and he doesn't know the actions happening behind. Him. That's some Roger Moore stuff. I'm and enjoying remember, that. Remember, yep. remember when you, you you crashed just a little bit, and he's like, "Phew, I bloody got out of this one." Yeah. Little does he know he's about to get his nose broken by an airbag. Bystander comedy. <laughs> I like how Q got his little action sequence. Yeah. Um, but also I, at the same time, I I don't get when people get out their laptop on like public transport or whatever. Don't just do don't, it. Just don't do it. Just uh, do, use your phone. No, don't just chill out, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was he was at work technically. I guess that's he? probably true. Yeah. Um. Uh, at one point, uh, Bond uh, says to a porter on the train, "Would you press this for me?" And I'm like, "It's not a dry cleaners, mate." It's a tr- <laughs> what, what are you What are you doing? I would if I was that porter, I would have chucked it out a window. Yeah. Be like, "Sorry, we wrecked it." Yeah. You will not get your money back. I have a license to just ignore people yeah. who are a prick to me. Um, it's interesting to me that uh, after the fight on the train, they mm. just got to stay on the train. Yeah. But I, I like to think that the, maybe they got kicked off the train for starting fights and general mischief. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Um, that is true. How many carriages did they tear through? Hey, all of them, I think. <laughs> um, I've got a note here that says... Just end to end. Yeah. I've got a note here that says, in my mind, the goofy guy who welcomes them to the Spectre compound yep. and the goofy guy who officiates the poker game in Casino Royale, they're best friends. Oh. They have adventures together. Can we also throw in the goofy guy with the wig? The coconut shell wig. Oh from, yeah, from Quantum of Solace. Yeah, he's into. Yeah, right, yeah, terrific. Okay, they're the they're the modern day Three Stooges. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, they made Bond and Blofeld brothers like it would be thematically significant in some way, instead of being the same twist they used in Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. What? Do you, what, what, do you, what? What? Yeah. Come on. We also failed to mention that uh, apparently a big part of them rebooting was because of the Austin Powers movies also. Yeah. So they're like, they've made fun of us. They've made, they're making fun of us. <laughs> hey, hey, mm. we're fun and cool. But I mean, I mean, these movies, it's harder to make fun of them because they're not as interesting. <laughs> or this one in particular. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know what I did like? Uh, when uh, when C goes to kill M yep. and he go, pulls the gun out of the drawer and the gun's empty, fun little callback to Casino Royale. That's I right. thought it was actually quite good. Does, how did he know that? I mean, maybe it's just a common trick Maybe it's a th- <laughs> that psychopaths use. Maybe it's page one in the MI6 manual. Yeah. Yeah, you should have read the manual. Yeah. See. You should be able to tell by the weight of the gun. But then again, see, was he's a pencil pusher. He doesn't he's know, a the, pencil he doesn't know the weight of a gun. We don't know the weight of a gun. Of a bloody... M's been in the field. Yeah. M's been in the field, maybe. Mm. Probably had a beautiful full head of hair that he was using at one point to seduce everybody. That's right. Yeah. It was whittled away by bullets. <laughs> Ropes. <laughs> Ropes, yeah. Uh, that's, all I, that's all I know I have. I love everything about that, Mason. You made some excellent points. And allow yeah. me to drive us down uh, because I'm, al- I'm actually legally allowed to do this because I do have a license to trivia. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm going to do that right now okay, we for go. the final time. Uh, actually, Pierce Brosnan spoke to Hitflix at the time this movie was coming out and he said, I was looking forward to it enormously. I thought it was too long. Do you like my Pierce Brosnan? It was really good, yeah. The story was kind of weak. It could have been condensed. It kind of went on too long. It really did. It is neither fish nor fowl. <laughs> it's neither Bond nor born. Am I in a Bond movie? Not in a Bond movie. But Daniel uh, in the fourth go around has ownership of it, etc., etc. Says a bunch of nice things about Daniel Craig and reckons that he's one of the best, etc. So now come and see me in Mamma Mia. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go. What do you think about your beard? He's Colonel Sanders' beard. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the eyes seen in the opening credits is actually Karen Gillan. Uh, she has expressed interest in playing a Bond villain so she could lick Daniel Craig's head, apparently. Tremendous. Yeah. Wait, just one eye. Apparently. Is she asked to be in it? How'd that work? Was I she f- super famous then? Uh, yeah, I mean, 2015. Oh, yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Guardians, Sherlock, I mean, Doctor Who, other mm. things, definitely, yeah, sure. mm-hmm. almost certainly. Uh, Monica Belushi, at age 51, became the oldest Bond woman Good at that her. point. She also she auditioned for the role that Terry Hatcher got in 
I'm going to take over the world because I have all the newspapers. Yes. So there you go. Radiohead something something. I put that in. Yeah, it was, nice. it was deemed. It was rejected because it was too dark, mm. which I wouldn't know because is that what Radiohead do? Are they are they a, are they dark band? This guy. I'm just thinking about it. And I don't actually want to know the answer. This guy is missing out on his birthright, being a dude who knows about Radiohead, has opinions about Radiohead. Uh, got a new thing out. I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but it's on PlayStation or something. It's on PlayStation, is it? Yeah. Great. Is it the game of the month on PS Now or whatever? Or yeah. PS Plus? Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, it's Tom York World. <laughs> Just Tom York Galaxy. <laughs> Uh, Just jumping around having sad adventures. That's what he's about. I b- imagine. Mm-hmm. So, so you tell me. Uh, and last bit of trivia, and I think this is interesting because these are the titles that are left. Oh, as in the the, the in books, novels, yeah, sure. that haven't been used. Uh, we mentioned uh, Risico, of course, in in mm. our in our video game adventure. Uh, the property of a lady. Oh. Uh, the Hildebrand rarity, mm. and of course, most famously, 007 in New York. Nice. Can you do it with any... What, what would you do with it? I think Risico is vague enough they could use that, Sure, right? yeah, yeah. I think people might confuse it with Sicario, though. Oh, yeah. Mm. And Sicario 2. Yeah. Something, 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 mm. something. Okay, how about this? Double, uh, how about this? 007. Mm. Pig in New York. <laughs> 007 goes to hell. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Uh, he would go to hell too, wouldn't he? Definitely. And he'd kill everyone there. Yeah. And then he'd rule over hell. <laughs> yeah. 007 goes bananas. Anyways, we're up to our, uh, our famous segment uh, that we didn't really name, but it's about, um, it's about whether or not he goes rogue. How, mm. is, is it too late to name it this? Does he use his brogues to go rogue? I said, is it too late? Brogues being a shoe that he might wear. Mm. Does he wear a brogue? He very rarely wears a brogue. But he has? I don't think Daniel Craig has. But as another version of James Bond, want a brogue. I can't confirm <laughs> or deny. It doesn't you know? He'd be more of an Oxford man. Does he use his Oxfords to go rogue? Is that better? Yes, James. <laughs> okay. he probably use his Oxfords to go rogue. Okay. So we mentioned up top, he's already gone rogue. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's technically on the job, mm. but he's gone rogue. But then later in the movie, he chooses yet again to go rogue. Mm-hmm, that's correct. He steals the car and he goes rogue. But do you think it still counts as going rogue when M comes around to him going rogue? Is that M going rogue? That's M also going rogue, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's a bad influence. <laughs> so it's too. like that friend at school who's getting you to smoke cigarettes. He got the other M to go rogue as well. <laughs> She's like, I should stick around. He's like, no, nah, come to a country house. We'll go rogue together. And the other aspect of it is, of course, does he retire? Yes. yes. But not before stealing a car, which was only a steering wheel. But then they make they made it back, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. nice that uh, Q put all the guns back in. He even upgraded some of the stuff in the next movie. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate him. Uh, I like him as cute. You know, because Bond knows he's not actually retired and he's going to have to shoot a bunch of guys in the next <laughs> movie. That's fine. He knows that, yeah. Uh, so reportedly, the budget of this movie was $350 million, but that was said to be exaggerated. It was probably closer to $245 million. I reckon it's probably closer to $350 million. <laughs> You're probably right. So yeah, despite this you know, not being super successful, mm-hmm. it did have a pretty solid box office at $879 million dollars. So when I said it wasn't super successful, Mm -hmm. it was super successful. But the producers were a bit disappointed because it wasn't received very well. Mm -hmm. And of course, it didn't make as much as Skyfall, uh, which is obviously a better movie. And just looks better because it doesn't have a brown haze over it for a lot of it. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. I'm familiar with the colour brown. Exactly. Roger Deakins was not in on this one, it turns out. Anyways... This has been, we've made our way through these movies and we've played some terrific and not so terrific video games. We've had some laughs. We've talked <laughs> about one of our favourite James Bonds of all time, probably. And look, we've just had a really good time here. Me and David Niven. Yeah, that's mm. right. He was mentioned in episode one. That's right. Uh, but look, if you do want to see these early, and maybe you do, you can head over to bigsandwich.co where they always go up a day early. Ben and Lawrence get the edit done and they fly up there like they're wearing a couple of brogues. <laughs> You could, have said, you could have said jetpack. You could have said jetpack. No, nah, I'm okay. going to say brogues again. Okay, until I'm going to find a place for it, Mason. <laughs> sure, okay. Yeah. But look, and you might be like, well, is it worth even signing up there? Because what's even out next week? Well, here's a hint. Mm. I can't remember what it is for the extended. I don't know. All right, nice. Is it, um, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do The Amazing Spider-Man. We'll do The Amazing maybe Spider-Man. Maybe time. Yeah. We'll okay. talk about it. Nice. But yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff there, including movie commentaries, including our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That goes up there a day early because we're going to be talking about that new one when it eventually comes out in Australia. And uh, and bonus podcast. It's officially an old one now, I think. Well, like, it'll true. never be a new James Bond movie. That's true. And didn't they make that movie 110 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, good. 
no time to bloody not enough time. The I can't Just say brogues again. Just say brogues. No time to broke. No time to broke. He officially again. has no time to broke because I've not seen him in a brogue. We'll say. Uh, anyways, I'm Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Have a great time, everybody. Maybe he's wearing a brogue in No Time to Die. He was wearing that corduroy suit. Sure. The brogue would work for that. I wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> you think Tom York's ever worn a brogue? I Who? reckon probably. Who are you talking about? The guy from Radiohead. I don't know who that is. Okay, goodbye, everyone. <sighs> this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.